I'm Izza, aka Evil Clever Dog, and welcome to part two of my Ares cosplay build series. In part one, I made the breastplate, pauldrons, and cloak. In this video, I am going to show you how I made the skirt and greaves, as well as a simple under tunic for this cosplay. This part of the build is also going to involve some design work on my part, in particular for the greaves, as the only official art of Ares is this one, which only shows him from the hips up. First up, I'm making a basic tunic to wear under this costume, using a pattern I already had. This is pretty much just a simple shift dress. I'm making it with some textured black linen, as I always like using fabrics with a bit of texture to them. I sew the dress together, and then add this red and gold trim to the hem. It looks pretty fitting for Aerie's design, and adds a nice bit of detail to this tunic. And here's the finished under tunic. Next, I cut out some paper pattern pieces for the Teruges, or the skirt, that Ares wears, to see if I like the size and spacing of them. Then, I transfer this pattern to white faux leather. I cut two pieces of leather for each skirt piece, as they will be stuck back to back. I also cut a piece of thin interfacing for each front skirt piece. When I have my front, back, and interfacing pieces, I start ironing the interfacing to each of the front skirt pieces. I lay the skirt piece right side down on my ironing board. Lay the interfacing over it with the shiny side down. Use some spare fabric, in this case an old pillowcase, as a buffer between the interfacing and the iron as I iron it on. The heat from the iron activates the adhesive on the interfacing, making it stick to the leather. I then continue this process for all of the front skirt pieces. Next, I need to attach both sides of the skirt pieces together. My sewing machine is pretty old and really not a fan of sewing leather, so I'm just gluing these skirt pieces together from this point on, using contact adhesive. Next, I use gold faux leather to make the border around the skirt pieces. I make a border pattern and trace around it onto the back of the gold leather. I cut these border pieces out. I fold over and glue down the edge of the border for the front of each skirt piece before attaching it. Then I glue them to the front of each skirt piece. Once that's done, I flip them over and glue the back down. I had these foam spikes from Polyprops, so I decided to add them to the bottom of the skirt pieces for some extra detail. But first, I need to prime and paint them. I temporarily hot glue them to some craft sticks to make this easier. And use Hexflex Primer to prime them. Then, I use Royal Gold Hexflex paint to paint them. This is the same gold colour I'll be using for the rest of the armour when I paint that, so this was a good test to see how much I like the colour. I seal them with satin spray varnish. Then cut them off the sticks. I loved how this gold paint turned out, it looks really vibrant when it dries. I used contact adhesive to glue a spike to each of the skirt pieces. Finally, I used Velcro to attach the skirt pieces to the inside of the breastplate, and the skirt is done. It even passed the ultimate test. Can I do a cute twirl in it? Yes. The upside of a design with only one view of it is that I get to add my own touches to it, like the spikes on the skirt. For the greaves, I had to completely design them myself. So referencing ancient Greek greaves and Ares' art, I sketched a design combining elements from both. To pattern the greaves, I wrapped one of my legs in cling film while wearing the sandals I would wear for the costume. These are the same sandals I used for my Cassandra cosplay, so they're already weathered and I know that they're comfortable. Then, I wrapped my leg in two layers of masking tape. This is the same method I used for patterning the breastplate. As you can see, it can be used to pattern armour for any body part.
When the tape is on, I begin sketching the outline of the grief design onto the masking tape. I draw registration marks down the back of the grief pattern and carefully cut it off my leg. I then finish cutting out the pattern and draw important parts of the design on in Sharpie so they are a lot easier to see. I also add more registration marks as I'm going to be dividing this grief pattern up into several pieces. I cut out my pattern. I also draw some more dart lines for some of the curved edges and cut them out too. Then I cut out all the registration marks and transfer the pattern to 5mm foam. I trace each of the pieces, then flip them over to create the opposite groove. I cut the groove pieces out with a scalpel. Before I glue the grief pieces together, I sand down some of the edges. I want to create a visible seam line down the sides of the greaves to echo the design seen in a lot of Greek greaves. Now I use contact adhesive to glue the greaves together. I start with the darts first so the pieces have their curved shapes. Then I glue the structural pieces together. First, the four pieces that make up the leg. And then I add the kneecap. When they're all stuck together, I tape them into shape and use my heat gun to heat shape them. Then I put together the zip that will allow me to take the greaves on and off. I sew a white invisible zipper onto some sturdy white fabric. I then glue the zipper onto the back of the greaves with it zipping shut from the top to the bottom. Now I have an easy way to put these greaves on. Next, I pattern the detail layer of the greaves. I again wrap the greave in cling film. And masking tape. And draw my design on. First, I make the V-shaped strips. Like on the breastplate, I trace these onto 3mm foam. I cut them out, separating the top and bottom strips. I then sand down the seam line so it becomes pronounced. and glue the strips onto the greaves. I then tape the pattern back together and cut out the vulture's face. 
this point in the project, I finally invested in a new pattern notcher, making the process of cutting out all the registration marks so much easier. With the registration marks cut, I trace the pattern onto 5mm foam twice, then cut them out. and glue the two halves together. I sand down the first layer before adding any more, and glue them onto the greaves. Next, I make the raised ridge of the beak using the same method as I did for the breastplate. I cut it out of 5mm foam, cut a trench in the back, hot glue the trench shut to make it raised, and glue it to the greaves. And again, just like with the breastplate, I keep cutting down the pattern to make the vulture's face. Next, the larger eye pieces. Then I draw the squiggly brow pieces, and again I use my wood burner to carve in the curved trench before cutting these smaller pieces out. I then sand them down and glue them onto the eye pieces. Then I cut the next layer of the eyes. And glue them down. Then I glue the eyepieces so far onto the greaves. Next, I cut, sand and glue down some eyebrow pieces. And just like with the breastplate, I use tin foil to create the base for the eyes. Again, I sculpt over these with foam clay. And then sculpt over the brows and beak for a more organic finish. When the foam clay is dry, I sand it down. And fill in any gaps or potential imperfections with flexible filler. Next, I trim down some foam half dowels and glue them down to make ridges on the top and bottom of the greaves. Finally, using 3mm foam, I cut out some eyelids for the vulture faces. Sand them down and glue them on. Before I prime the greaves, I cover the zippers in frog tape so they don't get messed up. Then, using Hexflex primer from Polyprops, I prime the greaves for painting. This also finally allows me to see these pieces as one unified colour, which is always a welcome part of the process. And here are the finished greaves, primed and ready to paint. I really enjoyed designing these based on the rest of Ares' design. And here's the whole Ares costume so far. I'm going to save the painting process for its own separate video, so expect that video next in this series. 
And that's part two of this cosplay build series complete. Once again, thank you so much to Polyprops for providing me with the materials I'm using for this build. There's a link to their website in the description below this video. If you'd like to support my channel and see more cosplay and crafting videos from me, then remember to subscribe to my channel. Please also leave a like and a comment down below this video as it really helps with the algorithm. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.